Hello. Welcome to the Automated Intelligence Community College, or AI2C. So who am I? I am, you can call me Professor Caudill. I am currently a graduate student of intelligence studies with a focus on cyber operations. And one could say I'm a, also an amateur or ex, an experienced programmer. Um, so I would like to take a moment, kind of show some of the work I've done. Let's open up our desktop here. So this is my GitHub where I, I post some of the stuff I've built in the past. So I've already got all the tabs open, but it's all in this sample of work. So let's just go through this quickly. This first uh, piece of automation, and this is all kind of how I've gotten into automation in my, in my personal life. So this first is just a script. Uh, you have like two rectangles you want to put in your email and your password. With one click, you just press this. Uh, this is with uh, AutoHotKey. It's on win Windows, but uh, we're on Linux uh, now. I don't use Windows anymore unless required. So this next piece of software, let's see if I can make this a little bigger for you. Um, so yeah, this is a script. This is one of the, probably the best things I've made. Uh, it's a uh, auto hockey changes how the left button on the mouse works. So you can see while the left mouse button is pressed, keep clicking. Um, this is useful for video games or what have you. Next up, okay, so this is a more recent one uploaded three weeks ago. Um, so, what is this? What? What, what is this? What, what are my favorite features of this one? So I'll tell you what it does and what what I find is novel. So what this does, this is an auto key, which is a Linux Python scripting language. So I'll try to explain this with the mouse cursor. So the task is say you want you need to click an area repeatedly for every thousand clicks or so you need to click over here once and then return you automatically clicking here so how do you do this so this parameter that's this is just pixels on the screen we have your x pixel and your y pixel sleep time that's how long how much times between each click Here's more coordinates. This just initializes a variable while true. So you're going to so we, we activate the script. And it, while it's running, basically, this is a Python iterative label. So each time we click, it's going to add a counter to our variable i. So after 250 clicks is what I was using. Um, it's it's a uh, this percentage is a uh, modulus modulus, so that's kind of like dividing div dividing, but uh, when you divide, it's like dividing, but the the answer is the remainder. So for example, two or seven mod two would be one because. 7 divided by 2 is 6 with a remainder of 1. So 7 mod 2 is 1. So basically, basically if our counter, so let's say we get 250 clicks, what's 250 mod 250? There's, it's 0 because there's no remainder. So when this happens, you're, it's going to click in a different spot. And then it's going to return. I don't know why this clicked there. So let's move on. 
Uh, here's another script, similar, but this kind of shows how keyboards are introduced. So again, these are X, Y coordinates. This is your amount of time between actions. Uh, F1 hits the keyboard F1, sleeps, clicks something, sleeps, clicks something else at these coordinates, sleeps, clicks something else at these coordinates. So uh, I did take a college calculus course and I did some of the work with the Python library Stimpy right here. Um, so they would ask, I had to do all the homework online. I just kind of coded all the homework online. So like it's a question, something like this, this is kind of how I would do it. Um, and then we get to the answer. So I think I have a few of these. What's this one? It's function. So sometimes I'll just draw it up in LaTeX just to kind of understand what I'm doing, even though it's not has no computational purposes. It's still nice to uh, kind of draw out what's happening. So this next one. So again, this uh, video is kind of explaining what the college is and everything. Right now, we're just kind of focusing on me. So, you know, I can kind of establish a credibility, so, you know, so. Um, yeah, so here, um, these are easy. You just simply do it. Very easy. Evaluate this integral. It's easy. Um, this one, easy. This one, easy. Okay, I, you get the point. Um, furthermore, yeah, success. Um, so here's are some more kind of wild things I've come up with. Uh, just exploring what happens, and how Senpai simplifies some of the math. So I think what I was doing here was comparing run times for something. Um, how Let's see, it's, maybe it's like how fast it computes really large integrals. I think that's what it was. What is this? Fourier series. So I was, I was kind of exploring Fourier series, um, drawing them. I'm a big fan of graphs. Um, so this is just iteratively getting smaller and smaller. Oreo integrals. So this is one of the more art, art, one of the areas in math where I find a lot of art. So I was kind of exploring some of these equations. Wrote this script. Kind of found some beauty. I don't know. This is kind of visually appealing to me. Um, so this kind this tries to explain what's what this is doing. This math is trying to explain this. So, see there's some nice aesthetics here. And, oh, this is my favorite. You introduce the uh, gamma function. And then it just starts looking like s something very alien. This is my favorite picture. Um, so, yeah, let's move on. This is kind of the work I was doing, learning microcontrollers. I basically converted these graphs in, into SimPy uh, using a you know absolute value and a floor function. Uh, what is this? So, so this is slope fields. It's when you have like a function on the x-axis and I think the derivative of it on the y-axis. You can kind of get 
an idea of the direction. So we're just this is randomly generating functions and it's just graphing them. So I took this idea. You can see I was kind of like a 3D space and I converted it into kind of a slideshow where it kind of makes like a 3D space. So you can see as I change a variable, it's kind of changing perspective. Here it shows it really well. So yeah. Um, here's me experimenting with 3D plots. And kind of other widgets with Senpai being pretty graphs. Um, I mean, yeah, these are really visually appealing. Definitely gives me, uh, you know, vibes when you're looking at uh, photons reflecting uh, from like an angle. Might be it. Then these might be used for. Um, so, show you some of the stuff I've done with microcontrollers. This is a simple push button. Um, this is some like an automated beeping thing and this is a temperature thing so you see when i touch this electronic part it changes the temperature and then the temperature changes the light so let's see if this will work i haven't run this on this computer before but okay so I haven't configured Jupyter Notebook with this computer yet, but uh, this is kind of the larger project I've I've made. So it's designed to accelerate your ability. Kind of the theme of the college is to learn faster with and do things better with automation. So this is my attempt at learning math faster with programming and automation. So a lot of code, a lot of code, a lot of code, a lot of code. What's what's it doing? So it's generating derivative and integrals to learn and calculus faster. So example it generates something like this and something like this. It'll graph it for you and then you can do your attempt at it. Q1 is question one, so you do your attempt at it, and then here's the answer. You can compare, um, and here's links for other solvers. They might give you steps. But every time you run this, it gives you new uh, calculus problems. So let's see what's next. Um, So I can tell you kind of what this uh, this school is all about. So the AI2C is a precursor to provide a foundation for competitors against the current intelligence communities. Kind of a replacement for the CIA or FBI or other like even commercial intelligence efforts. You know, our mission is to automate all data collection, data analysis, and presentation of that data so humans can enjoy a life of leisure in the broader movement of an economy where physical and intellectual labor is mostly done by machines. You know, kind of at this transition point. So where this YouTube channel is basically our campus. So when um, I'll try to upload bi-monthly. I'm very busy, so don't take me at my word. But after a year or so, I'll kind of reevaluate if I want to continue this channel. So why? What's the point? Um, the AI2C is an experiment or an alternative to traditional colleges as well as automating other things. Um, our two initial classes will reflect 
contrary realist and idealist approaches to automation and robotics. We operate under it, the premise that since self-driving autonomous vehicles perform better and are safer than human drivers, then the AI2C strives to explore the limits of automating other areas of human labor. So as you, from my background, I'm more strengthened in the software side rather than the robotics side, but I'm, tr I'm trying to learn on the robotics side as well. So we hope to provide a foundation for a fully autonomous intelligence community that might be capable of briefing leaders with customizable reports. So how are we, are we going to achieve this? Um, so AI2C will try to balance dreaming and pragmatic thinking. So, you know, what's, uh, what's romantic and what's practical. Uh, it's, they're both important sides to address. So our intro to physics, physics course will help with robotics and ensuring a physical substrate is efficient and appropriate for computing purposes, especially when considering the point when information, where we informationalize cognition, transcend the physical body. How, how do you build a good physical substrate and protect that substrate while you know, we're living in virtual reality if we get there? So our philosophy of robotics and automation course will seek to explore other limits and possibilities. For example, is a physical substrate always necessary for a computer? Could quantum mechanics and computing offer an alternative? Likewise, what are the best areas of human physical or intellectual labor to automate? And is it better to prioritize automated cognition, physical tasks, or a mixture of, of both on a path to fully autonomous economy? So like, for example, Neuralink, they, they have a mixed approach. They have the robotics that does the surgery, then automating a lot of the cognitive features with, or partially automating them anyways. Furthermore, how much of a university can be automated? That's also a question I would be interested in exploring. So the AI2C finds targets for automation and respective solutions. Future courses might include linear algebra or on brain machine interfaces, but I think I will avoid lectures on how to program a machine since the rapid success of large language models seems to suggest this area will be obsolete soon. We may explore applications with microcontrollers, microcontrollers like I did, I showed you with the push buttons on the Arduino and the temperature microcontroller. Would like to do more of that. Um, also, I'd like to explore biomimicking robot designs and methods. So, a little bit more miscellaneous stuff about our school. The AI2C hopes to inspire the next generation of intelligence communities. AI2C envisions operating in several futuristic outcomes. We hope to provide solutions in a world where every neuron for a majority of people is replaced with artificial neurons to facilitate, facilitate a life experience predominantly in virtual worlds where their informationalized cognition may be stored in a physical substrate, possibly protected by a machine homeland security or something like that. It's very far out, but um, you know, it's hard to predict the rapid pace of how technology moves. Um, it seems safer to be more visionary than um, not. Uh, so the AI2C on the short term aims to automate minor tasks by today's intelligence community personnel. And this is also difficult because I'm not, I don't work for the, any like national or commercial intelligence communities, except for this YouTube channel, if you want to call it that. So it's hard to automate something you don't know what it is. You know, I don't know 
how the CIA, what their day-to-day -day tasks are exactly. I don't think they would want me to know either. So for counterintelligence purposes, but, um, you know, including uh, human intelligence efforts with human-like deceptive machines. That's just, if you want to look at Hanson Robotics, Hong Kong's uh, Sophia model robot, it's interesting. So the AI2C is also open to exploring the line separating machines and humans and to determine what criteria an artificial life form is deserving of civil and political rights. So, you know, I'm very futuristic in this regard. Um, you know, at some point, there, it's, there's, it's very difficult to separate what it, how human intelligence and machine intelligence, where do you draw the line, you know? Um, am I just a uh, series of inputs, outputs, neural synapses that could just be represented as information on a machine? Um, these are, you know, pressing questions in the current state of things. The AI2C may explore alternative organizations for how a government should be formed to better facilitate autonomous control, command and control. So, you know, what would a machine republic look like? Uh, where machines kind of are the caretakers for humans, and, you know, humans kind of just enjoy their private lives. How would that look like, you know? Lastly, the AI2C is not anti-human by seeking ways of removing traditional biological humans from an outdated economic system. Rather, the AI2C seeks to create an inclusive and a harmonious coexistence between humans and machines. So I have a list of some of the early ideas for courses I want to teach. Um, I definitely do not want to get sidetracked. You know, we have a very specific vision and goal and constantly iterating on top of what we just learned. So the courses are kind of balanced between realism and idealism. So the first realist course might be just a robotics ROS or microcontrollers course. And then I would probably pair that with an idealist course like a philosophy of robotics and automation. This would explore something like non-physical quantum computing, if that's even possible. Other courses, physics, that's another realist course, I would say. That would be like calculus, algebra, actuators, and hydraulics, electrons, quantum mechanics, information theory. Um, and then another idealist course might be brain-machine interfaces. You know, is it better to merge with machines first through a mixed, mixed approach like Neuralink, or is it better to focus on one? Like, like, is it better to focus on automating cognition and learning and discovery, or on a ro more physical robotic side? For example, uh, Neuralink, I can, might be able to type 80 words. Right now, I might type 80 words per minute, but with Neuralink, I might type 800 words per minute. So what? So you know, you can see how that can make the road to full autonomous intelligence community might be better just to get a brain machine interface first, and then do the hard, the robotic side. Um, there's arguments for either. Um, as you show, as I showed with some of the scripts I've made, it's mostly what I'm good at is partially automated things, and a little bit of fully automated. So I'm big on the ways you can just partially automate a task to just make it a lot better. Um, you know, this, the human is still in the loop, but the task is made a lot. More efficient and optimized with just by integrating some uh, automation. But I would like to explore how to fully how to go from that to fully autonomy. So what's today's issues? 
issues with today's intelligence community. So two issues is a nation states prioritize what is good for maintaining the integrity of the nation state over what might be good for humanity as a whole. The other issue is that intelligence community members believe they need to keep their jobs and therefore are reluctant to abide by or properly interpret laws or even automate and improve their own tasks. So there's a lot of biases and um, conservative notions that are kind of holding back progress in one perspective. So the best advantage the AI2C offers is open accessibility, embracing an open source culture, and a willingness to adopt frontier technology like large language models in our science. Other schools cannot rigorously, rigorously dif differentiate ChatGP from Microsoft Word's autocorrect features, nor can other schools rigorously define what artificial intelligence is, nor why AI should not be implemented in or, you know, student coursework. At the AI2C, we encourage use of large language models to expedite our thinking, organizing, learning, and discovery to better arrive at solutions. So I hope I was pretty clear for the most part. Um, hopefully I don't have to record this again. So thank you all for watching, and I will see you next time.